Welcome back to episode. I don't know what to do with my fingers. <laughs> Ready? I might go like that. That. Or that. Or that. That one. Or that. That one. Which one? No. That. No. That. No. That. Yeah, that. but the other way around. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Welcome back to episode three of the. <laughs> she looks so weird. Like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Welcome back to episode three of the compound rebuild. Now things are taking shape awfully nicely. This rolling, this mega structure, this gargantuan feature has taken a hell of a long time to get to how it's looking now. And actually I think there's quite a bit more left to do. I'm always over ambitious with this big stuff. I think I can knock it up in a day. That's been a week of progress, but it is almost there. And now it's plied. You can see how open and broad and wide that transition is and how actually how chill it's going to be to ride down. I can't wait to drop into this. In this video, we're going to test ride this. Although we have to sort out this clay pit. Absolute sticky mess of a quagmire, but that's also going to be in this episode. We've got a very cool build lapse coming up, which is us building the second transition. So those two are butted up against each other. They're identical. They form a 3.2 metre wide roll in and it's going to meet all the way up to that scaffold board. We're going to apply to the top. I've had 20 sheets of buffalo board delivered. This stuff, this is great stuff, it's great stuff. Quite nervous for plying up the big 45 degree angle bit, but luckily it's not windy. Putting plywood down in the wind is a no-no because it's you're holding a sail. And Ben fell, <laughs> fell off that one two years ago, didn't you? Yeah. Would have been you. Um, but he's actually turned up for work today, so we're going to get him going, get him into it, and then you can ride down it brakeless and slam into Everest. Fantastic. So we're going to finish this now with the build laps. It needs a name, so you guys rack your brains for a cool, creative, intelligent, quirky and witty name for the roll-in that's going to meet Everest. And then we'll check in and update you with what's going to happen next. But the compound's coming on nicely, actually. We need some sun, but I'm very, very stoked that so many people are involved with this and already throwing ideas out for the future. I, I talked about all that leftover scaffolding and actually the most common, the most common suggestion has been build a massive whale tail somewhere. Oof. He's in! Oh, oh! You okay? Oh you okay? Which I'm up for, but I've also got another really cool idea, something down the end. So let's get on with it. Let's drop in to a build lapse. Here we go. Finally complete and it's massive. I've always stood up at this height. This is where my original drop-in started from, but now it's more exposed and we've got this very sick roll-in that I'm very proud of. It feels so much higher and for the first time, I mean, this is our first time up here, I can visualize how much speed we're gonna have for that jump into Everest, which needs a kicker. We need to do all of that bomb hole. So we've got another build laps coming up, but for the first time, I'm very excited and I know for sure that we're going to have loads and loads of speed which has confused a few people and here's why. So people in the comments have already questioned the fact that I've got all of this new claimed speed but I'm starting at the same height as I always did and finishing at the same height as I always did and what that means is I've got the same amount of gravitational potential energy as I had before which when you drop in converts into kinetic energy due to the force downwards of gravity that's a finite amount. It can only convert into as much energy as it is. So surely I'm going to finish with the same speed. That is absolutely true. But by building a roll in, we've done a few things. Firstly, the obvious one is consistency. I'm going to have way more consistent and accurate speed every time than I had with a drop. Secondly, by making this roll in more mellow at 45 degrees and not as steep as that one, I can finally have a roll in that I can pedal down. What that does is 
within the first sheet of plywood. I've hardly even made a dent in the rolling, but I've got a way bigger initial velocity and still all that remaining potential energy. So when I get to the bottom, I'll definitely be going a lot faster because I'm not dropping in and naturally falling with the only force applied being gravity. I've actually used my legs to create kinetic energy to then add to from gravitational potential energy. So down here, basically, ultimately, at the end of the day, we're gonna be motoring <laughs> into a kicker that I don't know how big it's gonna be yet. But now the next job is to sort out this whole bomb hole area. And I'm stoked that we've put steps up the side, by the way, I forgot to mention that. They are really good. And my worry was it was gonna to be too steep to walk up, but I'm pretty, pretty certain that we're gonna be able to walk a bike up the side of those so i don't have to climb up ladders anymore we don't have to do this awkward hellish i don't know what's going to happen with that but that as a standalone entity is so mega and i'm so proud of it it just needs a clean so next build lapse is coming up we're going to have to bulk out this entire area i'm going to use road planings which is kind of like hardcore build it up to that level there make it run ever so slightly downhill and to the left so the water all goes into that drain and then i haven't decided yet what surface i'm going to finish it with whether it's concrete sand screed actually i'd like a lot of you guys to suggest what a good riding surface is that one over there was screed but it was quite i mean it's brittle it broke up at the bottom of that takeoff there's actually a rut which i never expected when i mix cement with sharp sand so i'm going to go with something different so let's bulk out this bomber with hundreds and hundreds of wheelbarrows of road planings and that's not the only thing that's going to be bulking out we are too protein baby macromudge build laps It was a lot of road planings, 73 wheelbarrows of road planings. We got a little tally going, didn't we? So that's 20 shovel loads in each wheelbarrow, just under 1,500 shovel loads to cover this area. Wacker plate it down, and it, I mean, two laps with the wacker plate, and this is so, so rideable, which is great. But you can see we're not at full height. So like I described, I'm gonna make up that additional kind of difference with, a, I think, concrete. That will make a really good riding surface. It's a lot tougher. But what I don't know is what ratio to use. So if someone does garage floors or something for a living, what's the good ratio of sand to sand, planings and cement? Because I don't have a clue and I don't want to get it wrong because that's going to be the next big job in the next episode, which then can house a kicker, one or two. I don't know what to do about the kicker. That's a nine foot one. This one could definitely be bigger, but should it be? Should it be steeper? I don't, I don't know, but I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get to it. I'm just excited to ride my bike down this thing after we've been here 14 days straight, full days, with a few days where it's too windy to do the plywood and the scaffolding, but I've still been up here. And this is the first time in what feels like forever that I've had my bike out the van. So I'm thrilled. I get to actually ride it for about 15 meters on smooth <laughs> plywood, assuming it doesn't give way, collapse, oh, implode fall and then i'm gonna to have to just skid all the way along here because it is going to be fast hopefully see if we can walk a bike up there i'm so tired but i'm knackered, I'm <laughs> Same. knackered and it's almost dark but i'm not going to wait till tomorrow to drop in on something that's taken so long to build so <laughs> this should go in the bang hold that thought right then up we go this is going to have a handrail eventually i'm not a complete lunatic it's really steep. It's really steep, but it's doable. It looks massive from here. Yeah, yeah, it's scary actually. <sighs> yes! This is like Nitro Circus, man. Do you know in the backyard trails you always did a hot bar spin into the rolling? Yeah. I know it was only three foot tall. Yeah. How much to hot bar into this? I'll actually do it, not now. I haven't got my pads on. Yeah, it would be mad. Right then, dropping in. Ready, mate? Full power. That's fast, that's so fast. That's fast. Oh my God. What? <gasps> <laughs> 
Yes, it works. I braked most of the way along there and still got over Everest. That's so sick. Yes. Wow. It's so fast. Do you want to know the best thing about that whole thing? Is the transition at the bottom does feel as open as we thought. Damn. Do you know how the other roll in, you, you can press so much yeah. in the bottom? I know for a fact that's going to be perfect for big enduro bikes, downhill bikes and all sorts. Oh, and mate. that was the focus. And I'm definitely going to concrete it. When I was pushing up, I was thinking, why is concreting it like a new idea? Why did I not do that years ago? And it's obvious because I had a drop that I wanted to learn tricks on, it would have been chaos to land on concrete. That's why it was always like a sandy, gritty mix. But now I'm going to cut. That's going to be so fast. I braked all the way through there. Did you? And the back of that's really rough. It's going to be a big jump. And I didn't pedal. It's True. Just, it's just good. Oh, yes. Mate, that's satisfying. So the main news is that that is the gargantuan Goliath focus project. And it's now done. Bar a few diagonals, handrail, and a slither apply at the top. It's done. So now we can move on to things that I know better, which is like building kickers, building trails, building dirt jumps. Sam Anslow looked at the sketchy way up to the airbag roll-in where we got the middle and said, why don't you make that into a third roll-in for a trails line, which starts over there, comes through where the wheelbarrow is. You could hip onto the side of that landing, go up onto this high bit, link in with the mulch. Do you know what I mean? We've already got a massive slope style line, an airbag, which is going to live forever. Me and Ben have been looking around for a spot for a big trails shack with loads of cool stuff like pizza oven and things like that. This place is going to be legendary. It's going to be epic. And finally, I've got a Nitro Circus roll-in to facilitate all sorts of tomfoolery and action this upcoming <laughs> summer. So I'm sure you guys will hang around. If you don't, that's fine. If you do, I'll see you in the next one. Legends. Oh, oh my God. Sorry. Give it back, please. <laughs>